Well, good afternoon, Bay Sox fans, bringing you the double A show here. And we are so excited to have one of my favorite people here today. And when I say favorite, it's kind of like a brother sister relationship. This show <laughs> is brought to you by Money One Federal Credit Union, and we help you be at your financial best. So here we go the big moment, Mr. <laughs> Paul Clary. He what? is the voice of the field, he brings the entertainment to the fans. He brings you the game within the game. And a lot of our fans love Paul because you got those moments in the game where it's kind of like, what's going on next? Paul might not tell you what's going on in the game, but he is going to entertain you. He's going to sing to you. He's going to bring you a smile and he's going to want you to come back to that game every time. So now none other, here is Paul and uh, love his bobblehead. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing, Paul? Wonderful. First of all, you make me sound like the Lorax. I speak for the field. <laughs> doing well adam how are you sir good good i mean obviously you know minor league baseball is known so much more for uh being more than just a game and yeah obviously you know you're a big part of that we've been talking to a lot of players you know over this time but we wanted to bring you in and wait wait, wait before we start you're doing. Before, before we start yes hi adrian Hi, Paul. Hi, good to see you. Good. And we usually start off with a wonderful hug. And we yeah, have okay. been able to hug. And I'm a hugger. You're a hugger. Here comes. Here it comes. Uh, uh, oh, we start off every day. We all come <laughs> and Adam is running around doing all his work, prepping for the game. And Paul and I are prepping, but we're, we're a little I'm bit prepping. more goofball side. Prepping. And I, I always make time to give Adam a hug before we start yeah, the game. Yeah. I get there. Robbie gets a hug. Everybody gets a hug. Well, I mean, you, you get special hugs. But everybody gets a hug. Ooh, do we get a special surprise? Yeah, we just got a special surprise. Oh, hey, surprise look at this. lovely lady. Shelly has arrived. Say hi to Shelly. This is your <laughs> fiance. And, and there's a... Wonderful little boys that we might get a good chat. This is Alex. You can go Alex. ahead. You can take the lead, Paul. Oh, I can take no, oh. one moment. Just one no. moment taking the lead. Okay, go ahead. Away. Go ahead. Oh, oh, that's Shelly and Alex. Uh, Ollie's in his bedroom watching TV. Uh, Alex is doing homework. He, he was doing it behind me. At, there's the desk back there. That, that desk back there is where he was doing it right there. Uh, <laughs> suddenly, the what's that, babe? He's done. Oh, he's done. Suddenly, the home studio uh, has turned into an office for her when she has to get away from the kids and do real work. Uh, we've been doing stuff on here with Zoom, getting together, uh, you know, some some staff just to make it to, oh, goodbye. Um, bye. Uh, getting things done. And yeah, obviously it's still a working household. So uh, I get interrupted all the time, which is okay. I mean, it's, it's their house, it's my house, it's our house. It's what we do. Uh, it's, it's our way of staying connected without actually having to go outside. So, uh, hey. Well, before we go down and, and talk about the Bay Sox and Prince George's Stadium and everything, tell us about uh, your new venture that you guys are looking at kicking up here uh, with your cider company. Uh, we're going to, uh, well, so we've already kind of started the marketing and branding and, right. and the, the backstory of Juliary Ciders. Uh, but now we're in the motion of getting it going. It's going to be a real business. Uh, lawyers have been hired. They're getting done all the paperwork. So we're moving in the right direction so that it's not just I'm making cider, friends and family are drinking my cider and stuff. I can actually get into bigger productions, more than six gallons at a time, and um, create a tap room out of it. So, uh, yeah, yeah, a little, uh, little fun uh, drinking stuff. Drinking. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. <laughs> I, I love your logo and everything. And we're, Thank you. We're watching this, find out more info uh, about, uh, uh, about Juliari Ciders. www juliariciders.com that's g-i-u-l-i-a-r-y juliariciders.com uh, also facebook and instagram and twitter we're, we're building the brand we're, we're doing what we can i love it i love thank it thank you so i wanted to tell people a little bit about paul ah. we first met um <laughs> paul's a little off the wall no <laughs> yeah i know this is very hard for some fans to believe but when paul and i met um it was an instant connection and I will say that I am a little bit more uh, conservative, and I like to say I follow the rules. Sometimes I press to the edge. My boss would say I might go over the edge, but I'm right here. <laughs> Paul goes so far over the line, we can't find him sometimes. <laughs> but 
in that note, I will say that Paul has made me a better person because I've become a little bit more out there and I've pressed the line and I think we bring a lot of entertainment. So my point of this whole story is about <laughs> two seasons ago, uh, Super Troopers was releasing their new movie. And I was super excited about it. We talked to Paul about it before the game. And so during the game, I don't know if it was Paul or I first made a monkey sound or dog sound. So throughout the game, we started competing with each other during the game, making louder and louder animal sounds. Now, Paul and I report to the same big boss, but we have two direct bosses that are different. Yeah. Paul, after the game, tell them what happened after the game when you came up to see me. Well, well first, here's how it started. <laughs> it started with, um, it was the first pitch and it was back to you, Adrian. But instead of just back to you, um, there was a, a stutter or something in my throat. and It turned out to be more of like a, Back to you, Adrian. <laughs> and but it, it wasn't so sheepy as that was. It was just more of like bah, bah, back to you, Adrian. But then it turned into being sheep to cows to pigs, and we would just end it some yeah, in there somewhere with a sound. And we're going and we're having fun with it. And then my boss comes to me and he's like, Could you knock it off, Paul? I was like, This is funny, Chris. He's like, No, it's funny to you and her. Knock it off. I was like, this is funny. Trust me, the fans are giggling at the sound that we're just throwing animal sounds at each other every once in a while. But not, you know, we still got the message. We got we the point We did all the done. ads. We did all the promos. We didn't interfere with the game. We never talked off the batter. I mean, we did it right. We did it the right way. We, it was almost like us saying Roger over, except it was in animal sounds. And, meow. <laughs> back over to you, Adrian. <laughs> no, uh, yeah that's how it went then at the end of it uh yeah i i was asked to please stop you know. doing that it's not just <laughs> a poor show and what makes you laugh but the truth is if i'm having fun and enjoying myself th the fans are are gonna gonna feel that energy as well and, right. and there have been games where i have just i have been in a funk i was not happy and the fans could feel it they're like what's wrong you're not your normal self it's because if i'm not joking in my own head and making a a, a little show up there, it's not going to come out this way. It, it's going to really come out like I got things on my mind and things going on. There are really two Pauls. There's the Paul with the switch on, which is what everybody sees every day. And then there's regular <laughs> Paul who likes to have the switch off and just sit around. Uh, I'm not a big like people person. I don't like to uh, entertain all the time. I, I do it because apparently somebody thinks I'm good at it, so I just keep doing it. I mean, if there's money in it, I'm going to do it. Uh, but I, I'm really a, a quiet guy in general. Um, you can ask Adrian when we've gone out and grabbed a drink or to the casino. I'm kind of laid back and quiet. Uh, unless I have to not be. And then I don't. Paul, you got to tell us a story about, it's so, so interesting to me that you were hired right before the season. Mm -hmm. The Sox had another person that was going to be the new MC. Uh, Ryan Sakamoto, one of my great friends and our great friends, was oh, the sack. great MC, big sack for so long. <laughs> and he took a job, went from Georgetown up to where he's from in the Lehigh Valley area. And uh, that opened this up in the base sock. Thought they had somebody, but that person kind of stepped aside in the last week or two prior to the season started. Here we were, you know, what are we going to do? And it's amazing that, uh, that, that we found somebody that's passionate about Bay Sox baseball uh, and, and has become such a big part of, of the Bay Sox family. So uh, here's, the, here's it's, it's a long story that eventually gets to fill, but I'm going to do it very quick, very quick. Back probably about 10 years ago, I'm going to throw a number out, out somewhere. I, I'm old. I don't remember how many years there in between. <laughs> Back in I the was day. bored at home. I was bored at home living in Middle River, and I seen that Baltimore had an indoor <laughs> football <laughs> team. Had an indoor <laughs> football team called the Blackbirds. And I okay. thought to myself, and I talked to my, my then wife, uh, I said, look, I'm going to see if they need a mascot. I used to do some mascot stuff in high school. And I'm not that old at that point either. Um, so she's like, whatever. So I, call, I emailed the team and they said, yeah, Paul, come on in. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll give you a shot. I get, to the, I get there and I meet John Wolf. Remember the name John Wolf, John Wolf, John Wolf. He has become my overall life mentor. Uh, he's the guy that if I have a question in life, I go to him, we talk it out, he gets me right in the right direction where I need to go. He's that guy. So you have work mentors and life mentors. He's, he's my life guy. So you have work mentors and life mentors. He's, he's my life guy. Um, 
so I, I meet him. He's the general manager, and uh, I, I do my thing. It, I said, where's the mascot? Oh, we don't have that. How are you on the microphone? So I'm like, okay, I've done some acting. I don't think it's that bad. And plus, let's be honest, it's indoor football in Baltimore 10 years ago. There's not a lot of fans to be nervous about. Right. I'm going to talk to five people, whatever. I don't even need the <laughs> microphone. Um, and it turns out that the, uh, the chain gang, uh, really great guys, uh, they hazed me the first day. They took my batteries out of my cordless microphone. So here was my first time ever doing this job, ever. And – it's promo time. I go out and Gary, who was our arena announcer, uh, he throws it over to me and I, <laughs> I had nothing. I had nothing. It was just dead. I'm checking the microphone. I'm looking like a complete dork about it. Nothing, nothing. Luckily Gary has done this before. So I just kind of like point to him like, it's you now. I don't, they can't hear me. And I became my first ever on field a uh, uh, contest game. I was nothing more than a Vanna White. I just <laughs> stuff. that's all I did. Uh, we get the microphone fixed. We finish up what we're going to do. Uh, end of the day, I'm thinking I, I completely screwed this all up. It's just horrible. Um, I'm about to leave the arena and John Wolf says, hey, you back again next week? I was like, you kidding me? It was horrible. He's like, no, I ain't never seen anybody pull it off the way you did. Come back. So from there, <laughs> From there, I was with John. Uh, then they went under, and I went down to the Chesapeake Tide in Upper Marlboro. Then I went back to the Baltimore Mariners up in Baltimore. Uh, then I went to basketball. And then here's where it all comes around. Apparently, John knows Phil because John has dealt with minor league sports for a while. So they know each other. And Phil posted on his Facebook something about assistant general manager problems. He said, my MC quit on me. What am I going to do? I guess I'm going to have to take a mic. John just happened to read the Facebook post and wrote back to him and said, don't worry, I got a guy for you. Two days later, I was in front of Phil, and it was just supposed to be for like an hour, just a, a quick meet and greet. Uh, mm -hmm. An hour into it, uh, Phil is being Phil now at this point. Uh, apparently, I have broken the wall that quick where um, you know, Phil's telling me stories about baseball that I still thought was kind of like, no, that's Hollywood. That's that's uh, that's legend stuff. That's, that's not really what happened. That's Bull Durham stuff. It's not real. Uh, it told me about dead guys and all that other stuff that he likes to talk about. And to, what? what? That's why the trees are so green behind the right field wall. Right? It's a <laughs> huh? It's a, what it's is it? Ball. People die. It happens. Uh -huh. So, yeah, I mean. Okay. Uh, stories. Okay. So uh, I start, I start the job. And uh, from there I find out that's how I got the job. Uh, mm -hmm. I talked to Phil. We were there uh, a one hour stretched into two hours. And then I told him I have to go. And he's like, okay, we'll see you back here again. And uh, that's how it happened. The first day I met Adrian, because I know that when I was working in, in basket, basketball and football, if you don't have a connection with the person that's going to throw it down to you, you're not, it's not going to work. It's two separate shows. And the way that in my head, it should always work is it should be one show. And what we do uh, in those times outside of the game is have another game. And ultimately what we should be able to do as on field people is give such a great show uh, and entertainment to the fans that even if your team loses, you can still say, I can't wait to get back there next time. In my head, yes, we're kind of the show, and there is a, a game that goes on, which is mm -hmm. important. Uh, but if, if the team falls into a funk and goes into a horrible slide and a tennis drops, we've got to do something to make it more interesting other than having a bad team. And believe me, from indoor football, I've had a lot of bad teams. So there's the game outside the game that we have to play within. So I meet her the first time, uh, and I'm like, okay, here's what I like to do. How are you with that? She was a bit like, oh, I don't know. Um, I, uh, if you want to try it, I was like, yes, let's try it. Let's do it. And then from there, we were like, bam, 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 bam. And it was bam. Because it was normally like you throw down to Paul and here's the new game and this is what we're going to do. And he explains it. And he would just throw a little zinger. He would, you know, give me a little hard time about last night. And sometimes he would say something like, oh, what are you up to? And I might be talking to our favorite press box mate, George. Right. And people would just keep going and tell people about me, and I didn't even know it was happening. So we've definitely had some very interesting days. And, uh, Paul, one of the things we've been doing, Adam is going to get his little timer out. Is, uh, 
about a minute of questions because we want right. to get a little bit more about you. So this, this, right. is, this is right. going to be fun. Adam's All right, on your point. mark, get set, go. Favorite color? Blue. Lucky number? 10. Favorite baseball team? At Bay Sox. Favorite cereal? <laughs> um, uh, it would have to be like Lucky Charms. Football team, NFL? Ravens. McDonald's or Burger King? Burger King. Favorite music group? Uh, it, it's going to be somewhere near Michael Buble or uh, Boys to Men. Plain M&M's or Peanut? Uh, I like Mar Marshall Mathers, plain M&M's. <laughs> Ice cream flavor? Uh, chocolate. Candy bar? Uh, three Musketeer. This is going to be a difficult one. Your favorite usher at the Bay Sox. Bubba! Bubba! I'm sorry. I love everybody else. Fred is awesome. Everybody else is good. But Bubba is like, here's, here's Bubba's laugh. <laughs> it's an institution. <laughs> favorite hockey team? Uh, we have to be the Capitals. Pizza topping? Pepperoni. All right, we're at one minute. We got to find out a lot of stuff about you. We did. We did. You know, I, I, I really like what you guys were talking about before, you know, because Adrian is somebody, of course, that has she been somebody. able to do games at Camden Yards. And yeah. I, re I remember uh, listening to a Yankee game once in New York with a, a rare season where the Yankees were really struggling. And they made this announcement on the radio and said, New York Yankees baseball. It's more than just a game. And I'm like, if the Yankees are using the minor league baseball mantras, like if the Yankees aren't just the game, what is just the game, right? So the reality, though, is that Major League Baseball is trying to become more like minor league baseball in a family-friendly entertainment uh, type. Uh, but still, when you go to a Major League game, it's a bad game. And when you go to a minor league game, you know, you love the game. It's so great. You're able to sit so much closer for so much less money. But the things that you guys do together is what makes it a special experience and a different one for the fans, I think. I, I think so, too. I mean, that's, that's something that um, I, I've often joked with Adrian about that. Um, you know, if ever I make it to the majors, I'm taking her with me. Uh, but she's got a better chance because my job doesn't exist up there. <laughs> right. You know, well, we both be, have said we may, we've made jokes about like if we're Miami, Miami. We we're looking we're for people two years ago. You know, <laughs> Florida. If you want to call me, I'm here. We could uh -huh. um because if you brought it to the major league feel, I mean they they're they're presenting a different game. But just uh -huh. a little of us, I mean it's entertainment because that's that's what it's all about. People are coming as a family to enjoy the game, to love baseball, but they want to be entertained. They want mm -hmm. the music. They want to see Paul dance on the field. They want to see me give him a hard time. They want to see me get a hard time. And it just adds that little bit of extra connection. And I just feel that Paul has really brought an extra connection. This is going to be his, hopefully his fourth season. Right. Um, we're st we've got a lot of hope and and Look, I'm we'll supposed get, to still get married. I'm still supposed to get married this year, daggone I it. I know. Better have this season. At least give me the, you know, the end of August. We're going to do seven games in August. Oh, uh, good. I, I should fit in there somewhere. Paul is going to get married at a Bay Sox game. Uh, Paul, I got to tell you, this is um, one of my favorite things that you've brought to the Bay Sox is going into the ninth inning where you need to rally. You're only down a run or two. And the, <laughs> how many parents have gotten mad at you since you started uh, having the kids take their socks off and swing them over their heads? All right, so initially, here's what it looks like from, from my point. Okay, I'm looking off the dugout, and I find uh, – uh, so I, I, I grew up in like a Baptist church, and the way it always worked to pastor, if you want to get a message out, he would look you right in your eyes. It may not be directed to you, but if he looks at you, you feel obligated to move or do something. That's just the way it works in the Baptist church. So <laughs> I, I do the same thing when I'm up there. If I see someone not doing what they're supposed to do, I will call them out with my eyes and look them. I'll dead look them. Everybody's excited. I'll dead look them. So I dead look at kids, and they go. <laughs> yeah, and then, then the parents are like, put your shoes back on. But. I, it, it's it's weird how like initially yes the, the parents give that look of like don't you do that until mm. they notice that there's something else happening there there's there's a a joy in the kid's face who right. just took his shoe off and sock off 
that you're not supposed to do in public. Uh, there's a joy there, that, that happy child smile that goes on. The parent mm -hmm. goes, don't, okay, no, I see it. I see what you're doing. That's okay. And that's kind of the joy of this is that we get to do things we're not supposed to be doing in public. We're, we're taking our shoes off. We're dancing. We're acting a fool. We're enjoying this moment uh, with, with, and it's got to be the entertainment that, it, you know, the adults have the alcohol to get them going. But to see their kids jumping around and goofing off as much as they do, uh, and, and getting the getting the adults up to do the same thing and goof off. It's just it's it's letting everything go at the gate and go. I'm in a different land. Let's just we have really that not that many rules. No hurting each other and no cussing a lot. That's the only rules we got. Other than that, let's have fun with it. And yeah, that's where the rally. Bring up real quick. You had an incident last year. From the press box point of view, I couldn't stop laughing because <laughs> you were getting yelled at by an umpire. Ah yeah. <laughs> music guy and saying to me. Um, does it look like the umpire's yelling at Paul? What's going on down there? So tell us from your perspective. Uh, the, my perspective? Now, you make it sound like I'm going to make up a story. This is the truth. Here's the truth. This, this is umpire, all version of truth. This umpire's been calling crap all day. Balls and strikes. That, and, and the fans, you can hear was the fans. a bad umpire. I will give. Oh, the fans hey. were also <laughs> getting into it where it's like every close strike. Now it's close because he's been missing all the good strikes. So the close strikes, if he calls it a ball, it's like the fan, like, ah, ah, you suck. You're horrible. Gee, get some glasses. So <laughs> there's, there's points where I'm waiting for the third out where I get to actually sit down and watch the game a little bit. Right. So I'm on, I'm on first, third base side, uh, close to the umpire, that part of the dugout, uh, waiting for the outs to happen. So I can go and I think we're going to do like uh, the pony races or something like that. And I have my microphone off. It's in my lap. I'm just watching the game, and here comes another one. And all I said, all I said was, oh, come on. That's it. That's all I said. So uh, third out, I hit the field. I go, and we do our promo. I'm heading off the field, same one. And I hear this over my shoulder, hey, hey. And I'm like, <laughs> and he points towards the dugout. Now, this is the one umpire. I'm not making fun of anybody that has, like, misaligned eyes, but his eye is one off a little further than the other. And he's like, yeah, you. I'm sorry. Yeah, you. You. And I look over at the, I look over at the dugout, and I'm thinking they're talking to a player or a coach. They need their attention. So I do that again. And he's like, you. Yeah, and he's walking towards me. I was like, me? Now I'm thinking in my head, he needs something, a message sent up to the press box or something right, uh, right. sent out to the clubhouse or somebody. He knows, he knows I'm the guy that can get the message out. That's what I do. I'm the guy. And he goes, we're, we're like this close. We're, come here. We're like this close. And he's like, don't you ever question my calls again. <laughs> and I'm like, here's, here's my faith. In the back of my head, I'm like, I'm about to get thrown out of here. This is crazy. <laughs> and I said, I wasn't, I said, I wasn't questioning your call. It was, I'm just a fan at this point. Your job is entertainment. You entertain. Let me do my job. I'm going to let you do your job. My mic was off. I'm just a, when my mic is off and I'm waiting, you know, I'm just a fan in the stands. I'm not on the field doing it. He's like, I don't care. Next time you're going to be out of here. Don't do it again. I was like, whoa. And of course, as I'm walking up steps and I'm, you know, it's the first time I ever got yelled at by an umpire and threatened thrown out of the ball game. <laughs> in my head, it's, it's racing. I'm like, did I, did I really mess up? What did I do wrong? I'm trying to relive it in my head and I'm going up the steps and I'm like, I got to go talk to Phil to find out what I did wrong so I can fix the problem or at least try to cut it off before it gets to Phil. And I really did mess up, which I didn't think I messed up. Somebody needs to explain. Immediately on the radio, I hear this sweet little voice like, uh, Paul, did he just yell at you? <laughs> it was Adrian. Yeah, yeah, that's what happened. And, and I still he, don't think my day. <laughs> and Adam, he's working so hard during the game and giving the story behind the game, and and our, so he misses some of these little things that go on. <laughs> oh, I do, I do, I completely miss it. I, but I, one I, thing, I, you know, I, that day I must have actually for once charged my walkie-talkie. Usually. Adrian uses my walkie-talkie during the game, and, and usually I give her a walkie-talkie with about 15% battery on it. 
So about the third inning, it's dead. <laughs> I, 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 every day, please charge for tomorrow. <laughs> so I talked to Phil. I said, Phil, did I do anything wrong here? Just let me know so I don't do this again. Or is he just having a bad day? And you know how Phil gets uh, about umpires that he doesn't like anyway. And pretty much Phil said, just do what you do. You didn't do anything wrong. He's just in a bad mood. That's all. Just let it go. Continue your day. Keep your smile going. Well, Phil what, gave me encouragement what, that day. Once I, I was at the Carolina League All-Star game when I, when I worked in Frederick. And uh, we have the post-game party. And we're, we're driving back. And they brought these shuttle buses. And I, I sit next to a guy that, that I don't know who he is. So I, I was almost sure he was one of the umpires. And we're driving back and we're talking. And uh, so we had talked for already like a minute and we still have two or three minutes left in the, in the ride back. And then mm-hmm. he goes, are you the radio announcer in Frederick? And I'm like, yes, I am. And he goes, Oh, <laughs> didn't say another word to me the whole ride. It was so awkward. <laughs> How great is that? <laughs> <laughs> that was so hilarious. I obviously heard you talk about him very kindly on the air. Exactly. Like, okay. That was <laughs> hilarious. So. Uh, but I really, I want to thank you for joining us today, Paul. And I really think it's so important for us to connect with everybody, see behind the scenes. And like I said, you know, this is going into the fourth season with you, but you have brought, and I really mean this, a lot to the Bay Sox. And you can see your enthusiasm, your pride, you see you love being there, and you you bring it every day. And like you said, you leave whatever's behind, and you're there to bring smiles to everyone's faces. Uh, we have the dog of the day. Um, I loved seeing you, you know, do the dog at the, um, at the beginning of the game, and hopefully somebody adopts the dog. And I, I look forward to many seasons with you, and thank you for joining us. Again, this is Paul Clary, Adam Pohl, myself, Adrian. 